Okay, hello, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good afternoon. Thank you for still staying with us. I think the crowd will come back in in just a bit. Uh, so thank you for staying for day two of Creative. Uh, my name is Jasni. I am the strategy and policy senior manager working here in uh, Creative Content and Technologies. So uh, I've been uh, had a privilege of actually walking around the, the hall, meeting some of you guys as well. But the key question is. Jasni, what do you do? Strategy and policy, what does that mean? So, uh, just a quick introduction. Well, basically, what we do in the three-man team that we have is that we are kind of the people who talk to the government. We tell the government how awesome the creative industry is from an economic perspective, from a market intelligence perspective, and what Hasnul was saying on the, throughout the last few years. It's about building an ecosystem. Now, how do you build an ecosystem? These four panelists will help us out because these are the guys who will be the ones investing in IP, buying your IP, considering what creations that you've made, whether it makes economic sense for them, whether it makes economic sense to move forward. So let's have to start that well, with a, a, a quick introduction all around and I'll take, and take my seat. So starting on my left. Uh, really, maybe a quick introduction of yourself, what you do, uh, what kind of projects you work on, just in brief. Okay. Hi, um, nice to meet you all. My name is Marini. I come from Primeworks Studios. Uh, I represent the innovation and distribution uh, division of our company. Uh, Primeworks Studios is part of Media Prima, and what I do is I develop concepts or platforms um, buy IP if I and or co-invest in IP. I do co-productions as well, um, uh, content sales, and also film distribution. So five things that I do. Is that okay? That's a lot. Okay, that's all. Right. <laughs> Thank you. This is just. <laughs> Uh, call me Zainer, uh, CEO of ID Media. We're based in KL. Um, what we do is we develop stories, concepts, ideas for television and feature films. Um, we have an office in LA, uh, Los Angeles, where we do uh, US productions, English language for the US as well as global markets. Um, but here in KL, we uh, do a lot of work with the regional players, uh, pan region broadcasters, and local players and platforms as well. Prior to ID, ID is new. ID has been around only for three years, but prior to that, I was 17 years at Astro, where I first met Adam. Was Adam? Uh, can't remember how we, we hired him. I think he was in a competition, and he came fourth. Hi, um, I'm Suteng. Um, I currently work with animation at Astro. Um, it forms part of the Gen X um, content. Um, we look at kids, um, young teens, education pillars. Um, prior to this, I came from the dark side of banking. Um, decided to join Astro because they let me dress like this to work, pretty much. Um, and I think I've been there for last two and a half years, mostly also dealing with corporate finance and recently made the switch over to animation. Um, hi everyone, my name's Mark. I am less than two weeks old at iFlix. <laughs> but our motto is we move fast. Um, yeah, so I've, um, my role is commissioning editor for Asia and I'm charged with looking at our original production strategy. Um, so we are at the moment taking a lot of pitches from production companies in the Philippines and Malaysia, Thailand, soon to be Indonesia. Um, and we have exciting plans to do, you know, scripted content that really breaks through. All right, thanks guys. So in summary, Media Prima, Yes, that's recounting. Media Prima, ID8, which is a, a, a very different sort of, not an acquisition, a co-production partner, uh, an, an executive producer, Astro, and iFlix. So pretty much the four perspectives of what's happening in media today. And with you out there as potential IP owners, uh, these are the guys you probably would eventually meet to sell or to talk about investment in your IP. So to kick it off, what would your potential platforms be? Where would you start looking for IP? Do you come here with business-to-business -business meetings? What are, your, what are your platforms that you uh, engage to seek out IPs? Maybe you start with reading. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've spoken quite a deal. I have quite a deep relationship with MDEC. 
and IPCC and all the, the, the things that they've been holding, um, um, or hosting has been very useful for us to look for the IPs. So that was the first way, because I've been in animation or this um, IP sourcing for the last two years really. I mean, it's still new, so it's really good to kickstart that with MDAC. Um, on top of that, we also have been uh, doing our own searches online, using my own platforms on Vido and things like that, um, and word of mouth, really. Networking, going out to conferences, MIPCOM and things like that. It's just keeping an eye out what's new, which is really, really hard, actually, because after, after a while, you kind of meet the same people. Yeah. In, um, I think in addition to making sure that you are seen and heard and you, know, you, you sort of uh, try and know as, much, as many people as you can, um, try and connect the different dots uh, across different industries is, is always an interesting approach uh, because the ideas could come from the publishing industry, could come from technology, um, uh, could come from anywhere, from banking uh, even. Um, so I, th I think my, my observation is the more that you connect, you become the bridge between the different uh, dots, uh, the, better, the better the ideas are or better the sources of the ideas. Um, I think definitely for starters, MDEX um, a great starting point. Um, the fact that they have the main touch points for all the most of the players here in Malaysia, both established and startups, I think that's a great starting point. Um, I think, um, speaking for myself at least, I think I'm also lucky because Astro has a lot of close working partnerships with a lot of international partners. Um, we have five, six um, different kids channels who commission and make their own programs. And from there, we touch base quite quite often with them. Um, and I think in terms of pitching, in terms of uh, collaboration um, options, I think that's something that we will also look forward to doing much more with them as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to interpret that IP question a little bit more from a creative maker's perspective. And you know, we're, you're all makers in here, you make shows. I, I would say the I, I'm much more interested in the I than the P in IP, um, because it's not much worth owning something if it's not good intellect if it's not good creativity. Now, iFlix is an asphalt player. We're a year old, and we do want to shake things up. So, you know, what I've been doing in the last sort of couple of weeks, you know, it was recently the Philippines, meeting colleagues there, was really trying to think laterally about where we, where we get our ideas from. And really, ideas come from people, so it's about the people, you know. We don't necessarily just want to work with established production companies. We do, but we want to find ways to freshen that. So it might be, you know, Philippines, for instance, has a great tradition in graphic novels. So why can't I talk to a graphic novelist and see what they can bring into the TV landscape? So it's things like that we try, because if we do things exactly the same way, we're likely to get the same results, and that's not really what we're trying to do. Uh, maybe to help out, and maybe bridging on that last point where the I is bigger than the, the P in, in, in that case. Um, in the end, it does fall down to a business decision, because, um, as good as the ideas are, you guys will be the ones to say how much legs it has, how much traction it can make in the markets that you guys will want to serve at. Uh, so maybe starting backwards on this way, uh, with, with Mark again, uh, would you have a, a, a kind of evaluation strategy, a 360 approach before you want to start investing uh, in a particular IP that interests iFlix? I use a dartboard, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, there, you're, you're right to raise that. There is definitely a science to commissioning, there's an art and a science. I mean, I, obviously the art comes first, this was my point with all of that. Um, we're not gonna not commission something because we can't license teddy bears and franchise, you know, but uh, you're, you're right, I mean, we do have KPIs. We do, f I think fundamentally it has to be an idea that meets our metrics, which we, because we're so new, we're trying to, at this stage, what we make is kind of our signature, it's sort of brand definitional. Now, a lot of people talk about you know, Netflix and what they did for the industry, uh, which at the moment they've become a behemoth They're producing so much content. Um, and one of the things they did was sort of all offer an alternative to what you don't see on mainstream television. That's partly to do with the way the technology operates. Um, it doesn't mean that we're gonna make a house of cards Malaysia. <laughs> you know, we've gotta interpret what that means for us. Um, and, you know, things will have to take various boxes and I think primarily if it's something that we feel has legs, you know, supports the brand, helps us identify ourselves as different. Um, from a creative perspective, those boxes are ticked, then we'll look at the business arrangements. There's no real simple answer because there isn't a fixed formula, but we will, we will do a scientific analysis of it. It's just that we're not as obsessed 
with the old sort of traditional broadcasting model of daily ratings, you know, that's not the only thing driving our decisions anymore. Um, I think I also echo pretty much um, um, his responses in the sense that I think we are governed pretty much by an over overarching strategy, be it to build scale, we, uh, be it to build your brand, be it to earn more money, to, be it to um, diversify your revenue streams. And I think sort of motivated by, by um, such objectives, I think we look at content differently on a case by case basis. Um, I think by and large, I think really there are generally two ways to go about this, right? You either become a me too, right? Um, you find something that works and then you try to sort of replicate the, the same model or you try to look for something that differentiates yourself, right? Be it an underserved segment, be it um, something that would really say that, look, this is a type of look and feel that really belongs to an Asian content, Asian skewed content, something with Asian sensibilities. And I think in that sense, we really do look at each piece of content um, very differently, one, one from the other. From a, commer from a commercial perspective, I don't think, again, right, um, not everything can be assessed in the, with the exact same checkbox, so to speak. Um, everything will have, some things will work better with publishing, some things will work better on the big screen. Um, so it is really on a case-to-case -case basis. We try and ask the question, how many extensions can we, can we possibly get from this single idea? Uh, and not necessarily in the medium format or the, uh, or the medium, you know, whether it's transmedia, which is a, you know overly hyped sort of uh, phrase. So we try and ask, okay, if you're pitching this idea, uh, what are the potential extensions uh, to get into different, uh, different forms? Um, if it's a feature film idea, does it have a TV series idea? Uh, digital uh, extensions as well. So what we try and do is make sure that we're able to expand uh, beyond the first page uh, and see how far we can stretch it and how, we, how far we can build a much bigger um, franchise. Uh, I can get into that in a bit more um, uh, where in our, in our main project we, we're building this franchise and this franchise is obviously multiple, multiple legs and multiple formats and, and so on and so on. So that's typically our sensibility and we tend to say no to, if not we have said no to most of them, where uh, people come in and share closed and finite stories where all the heroes die and they all, the characters just, they just get annihilated and so on. So we, we can't see how we can actually push the idea further. I think the more that we can see a much more expanded horizon, the better it is for us. Okay, um, well... From Media Prima's point of view, we knew that animation is something that we want to get into and we have to help build the ecosystem, as you say. So for us, the first animation that we did pick um, was something that spoke across all of our platforms. So we needed to get the buy-in from all of our um, different transmedia platforms to make it build. I mean, I think what I agree with what Zainer says, that we have to pick an IP that can actually expand across our own um, um, horizons and then build a brand. So when I picked um, the animation, it has to be that it's a brand that you can build upon. I think that's very, uh, uh, very important that we have to build this brand in order for the IP to grow later on in life. Because we know that the animation lifespan only kicks in later on while licensing and merchandising much, much later in, in the game. So that was the first reason why we got into an IP like Agent Ali to begin with. But moving forward, um, our intentions and motivations can be quite different as these gentlemen have put, point out. So it could be that my anime, the, the IP that I buy next could actually rest on a different platform, but it fulfills a different need. But it goes back to how, how can this brand uh, potentially grow? Um, I think that's really important. And, and that's a great segue because uh, we, we were about to go into specifics next. Um, uh, it's very obvious uh, you guys have worked on, on Agent Ali and that's uh, been a, somewhat of a success really. Um, and, and for a lot of, uh, for a lot of at least for the first three of you uh, with ID and with Astro, um, we are well aware of the co-investment and co-production work that you've done before. Uh, and let's maybe start back with, with, with you, Rini, on the Agent Ali uh, part. Uh, what, what was the, the key interest to you on embarking on that? Uh, you were saying it takes off on multiple platforms. And what was the criteria that uh, the, the, the guys at the studio 
demonstrate it so that you said, I like this idea. I like the, the people behind it. What, what was that? Um, definitely the people that, that are behind WOW Animation that worked on Agent Ali, they come from a very long history as well. Um, and they had a good reputation. And uh, they're, they're people that we think should also come up in the industry as well, good players. So that's one of the reasons why we buy into their, their, their idea. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, like everyone can actually create good quality stuff. I mean, I'm not discounting their, their abilities, but I think it's also the story that the, uh, the, the IP promises and how we can expand on the IP that was more intriguing to us and we were drawn to that as well. So the c combination of two, talent as well as the potential of the IP. Uh, Zaini, you, you, uh, in, in speaking to your, to your, to your team in uh, IDA, uh, we got to learn about Sydney Sailboat and also of other IPs. Maybe a bit more about that. What, 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 what was the key criteria for, for, for you in IDA that led you down to saying, I'm going to put some money down on this, um, I believe in this. Uh, wh what was your thought process behind that? Maybe, uh, yeah, so I think our black box is basically the link between creative and commercial. Um, and I'll give you two examples. In Malaysia, our biggest initiative right now is to adapt um, the books of Ramli Awang Murshid, one of uh, Malaysia's most successfully, uh, successful uh, uh, author uh, with current craft. So he's, he's got like 28 books on his belt now. Uh, so within his creation, he's got uh, five characters that we like very much because these five characters can be seen as heroes and we're creating a whole universe and franchise around these five characters together with the villains and the baddies and you know, demons and things like that. Um, so that's the IP, if you like, right? Then what, what we've done with uh, his creation is to see the commercial extensions. So this year, in August, we will go into production for the first character called Tamburo, which is his first book based on a character, half man, half demon, in the jungles of Kaningau in Sabah. So that's going to be a, a live action, feature film, uh, action genre um, that's done here. Um, similarly, a char another character, which is by far the most uh, popular character, is currently being written for Indonesia uh, as a potential release in Indonesia. Again, an IP over there, a uh, nice story, natural extension, extension for it to be done for a different market. In the US, uh, our project Dirt Gently, that we basically went out to option the book from the estate of Douglas Adams, who wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So we, we got that and we, we hired the writer, we developed it uh, with him as well as with our partner. And because of our initial early development, we were able to be in a position where we would be able to pitch, a, a put a very strong pitch to networks and cable broadcasters in the US and now it's being shot, it's just uh, it's currently in production in Vancouver, uh, slated for TX in October. So I think it's, it's coming back to what I said earlier, um, yes there is a strong IP, there is a strong idea, but what are the, what are the commercial possibilities and I think that's what we be, that's our sensibility uh, and the, the origins are always coming back to Okay, uh, underlying strong IP, does it have a fan base? Does it have a story possibility or possibilities? And then we take it from there. Yeah, um, Sutek, so we, we've got to know that uh, Didi and Friends are now uh, uh, part of your stable. <laughs> um, what was it about the guys in Digital Durant? What was the IP about that really, was it a genre uh, a mix that was interesting to you? Yeah, um, very much actually. I mean, building on um, on what Marini and Zainir has said, um, if you look at the key facets of animation, right? Um, that's there is what there are three things really that um, sort of differentiates it itself from other genres. Um, it has that exportability function to it. Um, with, uh, with most animation, whether it's a case of dubbing or subtitling, it travels well. Um, DD is still very much uh, Malaysian based right now. But we see huge potential in taking that one IP and really build it and then really scaling it across the region very quickly if you wanted to. Um, if you look at franchisability, um, in able to do brand, um, branded content, in able to translate that into mascots or put it on for kids' loyalty programs, um, it has, again, it had huge, huge potential. Um, and if you look at just longevity, right, and building that fan base over multiple years. I think with kids' content, at least once where, I mean, 
I, I would assume that we have many parents here today as well. You know, you loop the thing over and over, they sing the same songs, they relate to the same characters, and then you build that affinity with your fan base, right? Um, and looking at Didi's content, we thought that that was the perfect content to sort of um, push it out there. Um, Mark, I'm a bit unaware of uh, any of any of iFlix original production or I'm any of, of your, well. your slate as yet. <laughs> Um, maybe uh, maybe a quick comment then from uh, from from you guys, the upcoming OTT guys. Uh, what, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Um, on animation uh, specifically, or uh, animation for a start, but definitely if you. I you know I mean I think we're looking. I mean again I'm very new. We're we're actually in the midst of forming our commissioning strategy. It's going to differ slightly by market. I mean the, the content we make has to punch through locally. Has to offer something that our competitors don't. Um, I am interested in IP in the sense of, of building franchises, so I echo my colleagues here as well. Because we understand that you, know, you need to build an ecosystem, right? So the content needs to be bigger than sometimes what a single platform can allow. Um, so in that sense, we are very open to working with, with people. I think another advantage, don't quote me on this, is but you know, we, um, we don't have to own everything. You know, we, we, I really want to sort of... My goal is to get the word out there that I, we want to be the partner of choice for the best creatives in the region. Um, and that's down to building relationships with people and, and sort of thinking differently about how we can get the best creative results. Um, yeah, does that answer your question, sort of? Or do you want to know what I'm developing? Or? Um, <laughs> of course, it would be nice if it's on stage. <laughs> ah. But, but uh, no, uh, I, I guess what, what, what we would like to know, I guess, as, as part of the, what the audience would like to hear is, would you be buying and how would you make the, the judgment to buy? Well, what are the things that you're looking for? And I think you've kind of touched on that. You've kind of touched on that. Um, a behind the scenes look. When you guys look at an IP, you probably have management, you have approval processes that you have to adhere to and think about. Um, and it's very different for all four of you as you try to decide on shortlisting, on green lighting something. Uh, maybe behind the scenes, behind the curtain of what happens in your organization, how does that happen? What's the approval process like? What, 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 are your, what are your comments on that? It doesn't have to be very long, but it does help maybe shed a bit of light to the difficulty of the work that you guys do. Oh, okay, um, I'll go. <laughs> I love it. The process is amazing for us. Um, well, we, a, a big establishment means we have to take measured risks. And so that we have commercial papers that we have to produce um, and with um, figures that we need to promise to show that this particular investment that's going to cost millions is going to bring back X amount of money in many revenue streams. So, I mean, it was very tricky for us seeing how it's kind of like the first time we're getting into animation proper and, and going into um, such acquisitions. So the process takes between three to six months and it, it goes through several groups of people before it reaches the higher tip of the pyramid. Um, and therefore, yeah, it goes through. So that, that so that it takes on. Um, and my best friends are um, the accountants, the finance people, um, law. <laughs> my law. I don't think they're my friends. My law, the lawyers are not my friends. They do not like me at all because I bring in new things to them, like licensing and merchandising. They'd be like, "What? We're doing? We're used to TV agreements only, you know." And now they're looking into different things, uh, intellectual property rights, and and in different areas as well. Digital rights are different from free to air rights and things like that. All these new jargons take a long time for an establishment like us to get our heads around. And I think that's one of the bigger things that I think production houses and even IP owners need to understand that about us. We're not as nimble as smaller companies as well. Yeah. Sure. Uh, maybe I'll just skip uh, for a bit because I think you have a very unique view of this. Uh, so think maybe your, your thoughts. How, what, what, what do you think are the hurdles that you have to go through because it's like, like Zainé was mentioning, it's, it's a dartboard. It's not really a dartboard. It's a calculated throw. <laughs> well, I sort of second Marini's in that sense. Right? Um, Astro is a big machine. Um, at the start of the year, we look at our budgets. And, we, and the thing is, we are sort of siloed in certain pillars, right? You've got Malay, Chinese, new sports, and so forth. And it's really up to us to say, hey, look, we think this is a key focus this year. We want more money, maybe. Um, and then we, everyone fights for the same pot of money. Um, but on a project-to-project -project basis, really, um, there is a check and balance of sorts. Um, so I used to be on the other side of the table, 
I used to be the one who goes, yes, I will give you the money. No, I will not give you the money. Today, I'm the one saying, please, please give me the money. Um, and I think having seen both, bo both sides, um, I think where the challenges um, really lie um, is really, although there is a check and balance system, it's really the finance guy having a commercial perspective on things and, and, the, and the content creative guys saying, hey, look, we don't have a blank check to just go out there and blow it out on um, everything that we want. There must be a certain ROI. Um, the plans need to be detailed out um, properly. There needs to be a budget. We need to keep to it. Um, and I think to have that machine oiled, right, whether it's quarterly reporting, yearly reporting, and so forth, I think the processes need to be in place. And thankfully for people like Mr. Zainer, <laughs> who pretty much laid, laid out the groundwork for Astro the last 17 years, a lot of best practices. I think those processes... I, I was part of the bureaucracy, by the way. <laughs> I, I think we, we, we have a fairly well-run shop at, at Astro in that sense. So whatever challenges that, that, that lie, I think we do have the best people there to get it done. And it's, it's a challenge, but it's sort of a satisfying one, I would say. I'd like to just quickly jump in and add to that. You know how you said your accountants have to be commercially viable? I also believe that they have to also be creative as well. Um, so create, accountants need to kind of learn to kind of like think in the gray a little bit and that's where we have to like challenge them a bit because we are at a creative conference, right? And it's all about investment IP, right? So yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so Mark, uh, <coughs> any comments on blank check? Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, sorry. Uh, look, I, again, I, you know, I echo my colleagues. I, one thing, and I think it's a great question because a lot of producers don't realize that I have to pitch to my bosses as well. You know, so it's not, you know, I make really, really bad. What, the role of a commissioner, executive producer, is we trance, we look at the creative, we place bets. That's what we do. We place smart bets on what we think is going to achieve the goals of the organization. But when I talk to, you know, the accountants and the CEO to say, why should we pick this idea over another? You know, I would never pitch anything without indicators of success. But the indicators can change. It entirely depends on the genre. For if you're doing, and to be honest, this is probably one of the reasons why there's so much copycat television. Because if you're placing a bet and you're saying, oh, we're doing this, why? Because oh, the last show that was exactly like that did very well. We're just going to change a few things. Um, I think with that spot, and at this stage of iFlix, because we're so nascent, it's a fantastic time to take risks. Because we don't have the baggage of history over us yet. But that doesn't mean that I don't go in there and give them, okay, from a genre perspective, this travels the best, but here's the freshness in the approach. Um, when it comes to KPIs, numbers, and figures, it, it gets more complicated, but again, that's by market. So unless we have two hours, I probably won't get into it too much. Uh, so Zaini, saving the best for last. Because IDA Media has its very unique role as apart from the other three players here. What, what, what is that like in terms of approval processes that, 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 that you have to face? I know you're the CEO, but I'm sure there are reporting structures, approval things that you have to go, go through, go through the, jump through the hoops. If you could share some with the audience. As CEO, my limit is about 10 ringgit to spend. Um, but within the company, we have two, I would say two key processes. Um, one is at the more creative stage, and that's basically the development stage. And later, subsequently, uh, if the development is successful, we get to the commercial uh, approval process, which gets into production and putting real money uh, behind, behind the uh, development. So the first part is a stage where, that's the fun part, right? So we go and talk to people, people like you and authors and various sources, and we get excited about a specific idea. We come back and we you know, sort of brainstorm on, uh, on the idea with the team and we start talking to, um, uh, to the higher up. So we're a company, we have a board of directors, so we talk to them and we get them excited, and we get them to sort of see our perspective and hopefully uh, for them to support. So at that initial stage, it's all about, do we think this idea has uh, potential? Do we think that this idea fits our overall strategy? And if so, let's spend some money to develop this idea further. Because many people come to us and say, here's the pitch, here's the idea, we're ready to go into production three months from now. It doesn't work that way. Because even with the best novel, with the best uh, screenplay uh, brought to us, we still find a lot of room and opportunities to tweak and make sure that we can actually 
be very happy with the with what we what we first see. So that's the development phase. So then, at that stage, we basically put in some money to um, to either hire writers or to find partnerships with uh, other companies and other uh, stakeholders to make sure that that development is done with a very clear commercial perspective in mind. Okay. So then we 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 spend whatever uh, the, the right amount of time. Dirt Gently is taken us two years. Uh, so now it's in production. Tobiro, I started getting to know Ramli and after many, many Tetari sessions later, now we are now producing the show or producing the film. So it does take time and we've been saying it all along, right? Good development must take time. It must take time. If it doesn't take uh, that long of a time, then I think you can improve further. So then this, the final stage is basically about commercialization. Uh, we go to the board and we say that, you know what, everybody is excited about this and we think that it's going to make a good feature film. It's going to cost X million ringgit and these are the people that we have been speaking to and they have agreed to come on board. Okay, it can be a distributor, it can be another uh, production company, it can be a, a broadcaster, for example, or a platform. So, if you look at those key decisions, if you look at those key processes, uh, our point really is asking, have you ticked all the commercial boxes? So I'm going to qualify uh, myself by saying that we work only on uh, commercial stroke mainstream products because there's another route which is more on the festival side, on the art house side, uh, which is a space of its own. But we sort of uh, tend to gravitate towards the commercial projects. And it's all about making sure that we have uh, a built uh, a decent business plan that lays out very clearly what the investment will be lays out very clearly what the returns are going to be, ROI, IRR, and all those um, numbers that accountants um, vomit, right? Um, over a period of time and so on. So you, you can't run away. And I think that's what I said. The black box is about uh, linking, bridging uh, that great creative idea with uh, commercial connections. Um, can we just do a quick time check, Adam? How are we doing? Is that 20? 10. Um, I would like to open the questions up to the floor. So I think uh, I have a few more questions to go through. But uh, if anyone from the floor uh, could, if anyone wants to come up, please let me know. I'll just keep on asking some more questions this way. But feel free to interrupt at any time because I think we are up against the wall now. Okay, so if there's none here. Um, content acquisition in Malaysia. You guys have experience not just uh, working with local partners. You've also bought stuff overseas. You've co-produced things overseas. How is that different? How would that? Uh, what, what what is the difference like between here and overseas? Is there a difference? Because it would help well people like us in MDEC to when building ecosystems. But it will help maybe from lessons learned. What IP owners here can expect is the game different over in another place. So, a free question for anyone to answer. You've done acquisition overseas. Any difference from here and outside? Well, um, I don't handle acquisitions um, personally directly, but I've obviously, and then I've worked at Fox and Nat Geo, so um, global content pipelines. I'm not really involved with the negotiations, but you know, we at iFlix, you know, we have a partnership with Sky. Um, so in terms of co-productions, I can tell you uh, it is extremely different. Um, I've just come from London. I spent the last two years working in London, so I learned a lot about how um, co-production deals are set up. Uh, I, there's just, okay, there, there's slight cultural differences, but deals on global franchises are, are quite uniform. You know, the terms are pretty much set. Um, I don't know what else I would add to that, to, you know, because we've sort of dealt with the gold standard, if you like, which is the Hollywood ecosystem, and obviously we're very active here, I can give you some perspective. I think the good thing about the Hollywood ecosystem is everything is established. So when you have an idea and you enter into a discussion, everybody knows their limits, everybody knows their range, everybody knows their numbers. So it is unthinkable for someone to come into a, a meeting and say, this is what I want, this is what I demand, this is what I need for my fees, for my compensation, right? Because over there, the, the percentages are predetermined. There is a range, but if you go beyond that, then you are, you're, you're insane, okay? So they, they don't talk to you. 
Um, so that that's good because y- y- no surprises and you know what your limits are, you know what your downsides are. Um, it, the downside to that is uh, there's not a lot of flexibility. Okay? Whereas flexibility is what we have here in the region, locally as well as in the region, um, where you are able to craft specific model for, for people, uh, the people that you work with, to fit your own uh, requirements, uh, be it for a platform or for a producer. Um, that's the good part. The, the not so good part is people tend to go, come in and go crazy and say that I want X percentage of uh, gross box office and you know this, you don't take it then I'm going to walk away. So we say thank you very much, next project. So I think that's the, the, the majority of the, the local practitioners uh, can, be, yeah, can be the downfall because then it, it, it sort of reflects on your ability to basically get into a commercial discussion. Um, I can add from a film point of view. Um, recently, we did the Indonesian film Ada Peringan Cinta, um, and it was um, it was offered to us from Indonesia, and we had to go through several uh, thought processes to uh, say whether we would like to distribute a foreign film in Malaysia. And what was most important to us was how strong the brand was. And then when it came to the license of it, then it became a very like kind of cowboy sort of like thing and then was broken out in different ways and it was uh, and fortunately for us we are in, in Asia we're kind of used to like uh, okay pa, you can do this and we can do this type of thing but I don't think it's necessarily the same overseas so it's very different I think you need to understand how to work with Asian counterparts as opposed to the Western counterparts later on sorry just just to add on to that as well I think um, whether we like it or not um, in the in the eyes of the um, of our global peers, we are a fairly small market, right? So sometimes when you deal with um, um, global broadcasters or global IP owners, um, they can be a little bit um, less resistant to change in terms, like um, what did I say? Um, and understandably so. I mean, if you look at whatever content you look at, whether it's sports, whether it's um, general entertainment, um, Malaysia um, as well as Southeast Asia probably makes a makes up a small component of their total sales, probably. Um, and I think in that sense, it's, up, it's upon us to sort of build our leverage in that sense. Um, I think if you look at what Astro has done over the last couple of years, um, the things that we have done to sort of push up our own IP, it gives, us, it gives us a better bargaining power at the negotiating table now. Um, and I think along the way, while we deal with the local partners, we want to help them build their leverage as well when it comes to distributing um, in future as well. Um, also adding to the building the leverage thing, um, IP owners also maybe would want to be open to sharing IP, meaning to say not necessarily I own this IP and I want to sell it straight up um, for, for, for revenue. Sometimes you need to kind of like let the IP go for a little bit and to build a brand so that we can make revenue together. So I mean that's in the co-production, co-investment sort of like model. Uh, this will be the last one around because I think we're up on the time. Uh, so in closing and also in, I, I would imagine what IP owners would like to know, what would your guys' uh, future predictions going to be? What are your trends like that you're looking at? What kind of genres are you looking at 2016, 2017? Um, what are the things in the horizon that you would probably like to acquire? Because these are the people who would eventually sell them to you. <laughs> I think Spain will win again for Euro. Um, that's my prediction. Um, I think the, the entrance of new players uh, is certainly uh, making this a very, very exciting time for content creators and those who are in the content creation side of the business. I think it's giving these guys a, you know, a bit of a red flag in their risk profile, risk matrix because of what Mark is doing, right? So I think that's good for them to have that debate and that you know go out and kill each other, whereas Nini and I will continue to pitch uh, good ideas to them, right? Right. We'll work together. So I think that's that's a great time to be if you're a content creator and a and a producer. Uh, inevitably, when there is a high, there will be consolidation. Uh, I.e., uh, the platforms will discover that really we can't absorb this many hours of original content. Really, we can't have the skyrocketing budget that these guys are asking for, and then it will find a plateau, and you will find a um, water will find its level, and then you get to a new, a new um, neutral position. But for now, next two years, guys, great ideas, crazy ideas, bring them up. 
uh, but make sure that you are able to, just like the previous uh, speaker said, find the right um, sweet spots for the different platforms. They, they are looking for specific things. iFlix doesn't want to be Astro. Astro doesn't want to be Netflix. Uh, so give them something that's, uh, that's suitable for them. I'm, I'm being approached by a lot of people overseas, gaming uh, companies, for instance, that want to license their gaming IPs to me, for instance, characters. So that's kind of like an interesting point of view as well. I think Ubisoft is one of the big key players as well. They come in and they say, you know, they're licensing their little rabbits to us. So I think also I'm looking forward towards us growing as a, as a ecosystem where we kind of like look into character first before animation, for instance. Um, but that's not happening yet uh, because people are not used to it. Uh, although in America and you, uh, in the UK, you can actually release the character first. Korea is the trendsetter for that one. So maybe hopefully we can go into that. It will be slightly more interesting to go into toys first and then animation type of thing. Um, I think speaking broadly, again, because, you know, two weeks in, <laughs> um, I, the big trend for me personally is that, you know, this is the golden age of video. There is a lot of content being made. And what, what that means is the bar has been raised. Um, fortunately, what that also means, in my, in my opinion, is for the first time I see a real commercial imperative to be highly, highly original and creative. Because otherwise you just won't break through and you project will not be talked about. That's fantastic. What we just have to figure out is how to get people to pay for it because they don't seem to want to. Um, but you know, if we can figure that out, then you know, there's no reason why we, you know, we won't expect to see a healthier ecosystem and most importantly, just better content because we are doing this so that people at home enjoy what they watch. You know? um, and that, to me, that's, that's, the, that's the biggest trend coming, more competition. I think the number of platforms that are coming up all over the region, right, OTT, um, even the existing FTAs um, and their, with their budgets where they are today, I think there's a lot of room for producers um, to sort of innovate themselves, yeah. to come up with new genres, new formats. Um, like what Marini said, I don't think it necessarily has to be built for TV or even for video for, that, for the matter. Um, look at Angry Birds, it started from a game, right? Then it, then it sort of translated into the big screen, and now it's going gangbusters um, everywhere else, theme parks, merchandising, and so forth. So, um, and I, I think Mark made a really good point about Philippines. Um, they have really good storytellers there, maybe in the form of a series, could be in the form of a book. Um, why not take that and go 360 with that, right? Um, I think the trend I see for the next, in the coming 18 to 24 months at least, is that a lot of new IPs will be developed, but not necessarily with TV in mind, um, but with TV as a core. Well, thank you guys, thank you. I think we're up against the clock. Um, big round of applause, please, for our fellow panelists. Thank you very much. Over to you, Adam. Thank you very much to everyone on stage there. We're gonna have a quick break.